good morning students myself vijay shankar from vc department chevrolet engineering college today are going to discuss about the applications of a smith chart how to construct the smith chart and how how to find the parameters for the given values to the applications of the smith chart let us consider a few applications of smith chart to an example consider a 30 meter long lossless transmission line here they are saying that a 30 meters long lossless transmission line lossless means uh, first of all you can know that the lossless is alpha is equal to 0 lossless transmission line a 30 meters long the given 30 meters long transmission line with the characteristic impedance of 50 ohms characteristic impedance means it's a z not 50 ohms operating at the 2 megahertz 2 megahertz the frequency it is a Hertz means it's a frequency. F is F is equal to two mega ten power of six Hertz. If the line is terminated in impedance sixty plus J into forty is terminated means Z R at load end. Z R is equal to given is a sixty plus J into forty. Got it, my students. And calculate the reflection coefficient. Means they are asking that is the reflection coefficient. What is the reflection coefficient? The standing wave ratio means S is equal to the input impedance Z in. If the velocity of uh, velocity on the line is V is equal to point six C. Have to find out all these three. When the given the velocity is also given, that velocity is v is equal to point six c. That c we know the standard value the three into ten power of eight meters per second. So one example. By using this example, you have to know a few examples. So you have to find few applications of the Smith chart to this example. So first of all, you have to find out the reflection coefficient. The reflection coefficient. They are asking that by using this uh, given data, we can find out the reflection coefficient, standing wave ratio, input impedance. If the velocity of line is v is equal to point six c, the reflection coefficient k is equal to, or we can also represent the reflection coefficient is a gamma also. K is equal to we know. Z R minus Z not by Z R plus Z not. You know this formula, my dear students. What is Z R given? Sixty plus. So K is equal to sixty plus J into forty minus Z not. What is Z not here? Minus fifty. Whole divided by. Z R plus Z not sixty plus J into forty plus fifty. So that is equal to in the numerator sixty minus fifty is a ten. Ten plus J into forty. All divided by sixty plus fifty is a one ten plus J into forty. Okay. So you get the ten plus forty j and one ten plus forty j. By using your calculator, convert this uh, rectangular form to the polar form. So what is the rectangular form under root of r square x square plus y square? What is the x here? Ten means hundred. Forty square. Again, you'll get the forty square. The forty into forty. Sixteen hundred. And under root value the forty one point two three with an angle of seventy five point nine six degrees. 
by using a calculator, you can convert the rectangular form to the polar. In the denominator also, you can same thing. And these two are to be divided with the value. You get the point three five two, and uh, angle is seventy five point nine six minus ninety. Okay, let us this is seventy six minus twenty. Seventy six uh, approximately the value is a seventy six, and this is a twenty value. You can consider. 70 minus 20. What is the 76 minus 20? 56. This we can divide. We get the point three. The k is equal to the magnitude is a point three five two three, and angle with 56 degrees. Okay, my dear students. We got the reflection coefficient. Okay, by using the formula z r minus z not by z r plus z not, we can find the reflection coefficient. Point three five two three angle of sixty degrees, fifty six degrees. Sorry. And the second one, the standing wave ratio. Standing wave ratio, the relation between of a reflection coefficient and the standing wave ratio is one plus the reflection coefficient by one minus reflection coefficient. It's a magnitude, not the angle, my dear students. S is equal to one plus the reflection coefficient magnitude by one minus the reflection coefficient magnitude. What is the magnitude here? Point three five two three. So you can add to the one and subtract from the one. You get one point three five two three and point six four. You can calculate this one. You get the two point zero eight. Is it S? S is equal to two point zero. Eight eight. These are these are all the three degree values, my students. By using the Smith chart, also you can find out the same values uh, whether you are getting the by using the Smith chart or not. These are all we are finding the three degree values for. And the velocity of the line is given the uh, v is equal to omega by the beta propagation velocity. Beta is equal to omega by v, and what is the omega? Nothing but two pi f. And v is given. That v is also in terms of uh, v is equal to lambda i f. Okay, the v is equal to omega by beta. That is, beta is equal to omega by v. But the electrical line of line length of the line is uh, v s, where s is a thirty meters. Thirty meters is given. Beta is equal to so beta s is equal to omega by b to s. Omega is a two pi into f and b into s. To find the length, the given the length is a thirty meters long lossless transmission line with the characteristic impedance. So the s is nothing but here the l b l beta l. So cos hyperbolic beta l, where l is a uh, cos hyperbolic beta x and sine hyperbolic beta x in the equations we already know. Z r into cos hyperbolic beta gamma x and sine hyperbolic gamma x r is a gamma is a different p there. That p is the propagation constant of the gamma is also the propagation constant, and the x is the length of the transmission line. The length of the transmission line is a l. So the beta l or here they are representing as s beta into s. So beta into to s two pi f by b into s two pi f. The given the frequency, what is the frequency given? Two megahertz, two into ten to the power of six, and thirty meters here given. Thirty and point six. Into three into ten to the power of eight is a velocity. The given the velocity of propagation is a point six into three into ten to the power of eight. Calculate this one totally. We'll get the one twenty degrees in terms of uh, degrees or in terms of the radians. Point six 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 into the pi. Okay, we got the beta into s also. So beta into s is one twenty degrees. Standing wave ratio. Is two point zero eight eight, and the reflection coefficient is magnitude is a point three five two three, and angle is a fifty six degrees. 
So reflection coefficient we got, standing wave ratio we got, and we need the input impedance also. For this input impedance only, we are finding that is a beta s the velocity. The input impedance if the velocity on the line is v is equal to 0.66. Okay. What is the formula for the z in z in is equal to or not or not is nothing but the z not only minus. We already know this is a formula. The z in is equal to input impedance z not into z r plus j into z not tan beta l whole divided by z not minus j into z r tan beta l. This is a formula we already know and we already derived this uh, input impedance function. Z in is equal. What is the Z naught given? 50 ohms. And Z R is given with 60 plus J into 40 plus J into 50 tan beta L. Now what is the beta L? Nothing but get the beta S on. This is 120 degrees. 120 degrees whole divided by Z naught is a 50 p minus j into 60 plus 40 j theta 40 j and tan beta l tan 120 degrees okay my dear students and calculate the function here the 50 whole divide whole multiply with the 60 plus both are is a j j into 40 plus 50 into tan 120. Find the tan 120 degrees from your calculator and multiply with the 50 and add the 40. The numerator becomes a rectangular form 60 plus j into whatever the value we got. And here the 50 minus j 60 j 60 and minus uh, j square will become j plus j plus 1, 40. And whole multiply with the plus 50 plus, let us take, tan 120 degrees. Okay, my dear students. So the 50 into, convert this into the angle. 60 plus j into the value will get uh, the rectangular form converted to the magnitude and the angle. And similarly here also, 50 plus 40 tan 120 is a real term, minus j 60 into tan 120, that is the imaginary term. Here also you can find out the magnitude and the angle, then multiply with the 50. Okay, finally they got uh, the value is z in is equal to 24.01 with an angle of 3.22 degrees or otherwise uh, in the rectangular form in the rectangular form 23.97 j 1.35 so all the values we got uh, the reflection coefficient and uh, standing wave ratio and the z in is equal to input impedance by using the velocity <coughs> okay and these are all the theoretical values. Uh, by using the switch chart, you can find out uh, the reflection coefficient, standing wave ratio, and the Z-in also. Okay. Now, applications of plotting of uh, an impedance. Plotting of an impedance. So we theoretically we find out the values, uh, we got the reflection coefficient and uh, standing wave ratio and also the input impedance. Now you can plot the values uh, in the switch chart. Uh, how we can plot? Uh, the first point is a plotting and impedance. Any complex impedance can be represented by a single point on the switch chart. Uh, 
this point is nothing but the intersection of constant uh, r circle and x circles that r circle is r r by r not and x circle is j into x r by r not circles otherwise in terms of the normalized they are saying consider the above example z r is equal to r r plus j into x r what is the rr here the 60 plus j into 40 the 60 is rr and 40 is the xr okay so totally this rr plus j into xr divided by the r not the normalized impedance zr by the z not zr by z not what is the zr given 60 plus j into 40 by the 50 so 60 by 50 is a 1.2 and 40 by 50 is a point 8 and this normalized impedance you can plot on the switch chart and locate a point p with r circle is 1.2 and j circle r x circle is a point so locate a point p on the switch chart where r is 1.1 r circle is 1.2 and x circle is a point 8 and meet to the together the intersection of the two circles is represented by a dotted lines and the point p indicates a normalized impedance on the chart okay now you can see that how we can plot uh, that uh, normalized impedance 1.2 and j.8 see this is a graph we have in this graph uh, see there is a point p there is a point p means uh, and here you can observe there is a 1.2 circle is there this circle is a 1.2 circle observe my dear students here to get the point p it is intersected the r circle and this r circle and x circle that point is a p what is the r circle here 1.2 and x circle is 0.8 1.2 and 0.8 let us see here the 1.0 is the center here and next line is a i am showing here the first one is here is a 1.0 and this line of next circle is a 1.1 next circle is a 1.2 and this is a 1.3 1.4 1.5 and up to the so on it is the infinite it is a infinite okay so i need uh, to plot uh, r circle is a 1.2 this is r circle my students okay this r circle is a, the total circle is a 1.2 circle only so this is a circle and uh, i need uh, the x circle also that x circle is starts from here the zero it this line is a zero and so on it is increases go on like this it is increases okay let us see that also so it is a one point uh, i think uh, i need the point 8 this line this circle is a point it see here this is a point 8 my students this line is a point 8 so so on see here the cross is the 1.2 circle 1.2 circle you see all the values here is a point 8 and 
got it minus minus. Now mention that <coughs> in the intersection point is a P. Okay, the intersection point is a P. We got uh, normalized impedance is 1.2 and J point eight. So locate a point P on the speed chart uh, where R circle is a 1.2 and X circle is a 0.8 and to meet together, the intersection of the two circles is represented by a dotted lines and the point P indicates the normalized impedance on the chart. Okay, my dear students. Now, the measuring of uh, the VSWR voltage standing wave ratio, after plotting the normalized impedance, you can determine the value of VSWR by drawing a constant S circle with the center of uh, the chart. And the radius is equal to the distance between the center O and the point indicating the normalized impedance. Means in the circle, suppose uh, this is a switch chart like this, the center point is at 1.0. Now we plot a point uh, P, normalized impedance, with the 1.2 circle. R circle and X circle is a point eight. With this distance, with this distance, let us take it is a distance from O to the point P. Draw a yes circle with the radius of a origin to the point P. With the distance center with O, draw a circle. And, and this circle is made at baseline, the baseline here, that value is a yes. Nothing but standing wave ratio. After plotting the normalized impedance, nothing but this one, normalized impedance, we can determine the value of VSWR by drawing the constant circle, yes circle, with the center of the chart, and the radius is equal to the distance between the center and the point indicating the normalized impedance. Then the point of intersection of a circle with the real axis at the right side of the center indicates this is a center and this is a real axis. That the point of intersection of a circle with the real axis at the right side. Consider this is a real axis here and towards the right side of the center indicates VSWR for the given line. VSWR for the given line. Consider the above example. Select a center with the circle O as a point O. Take a distance from O to P, indicating the normalized impedance, and then draw a circle. The circle cuts the horizontal real axis, the point Q. This indicates the value of VSWR for the line considering as shown in the figure. So what is the value we got uh, the standing wave ratio previously? In the theoretically, we got uh, standing wave ratio is a 2.088. After drawing this uh, a circle, S circle, with the radius of uh, the distance from origin to the point P, it crashes the exactly the 2.088 circuit or approximately the 2.088. Okay, let us see that circuit whether it is a process the same value or not in the switch chart. See in the switch chart, this is a S circle. So whatever they are showing is a dark uh, S circle. So here it is a S circle. With the radius of uh, 
0 to p value that p is 1.2 circle One point two plus J into point eight. From the origin, to see what is the value of this one. What is the value? So here the one point two already the circle is there, and next is a one point five, and here the one point eight. Then is a two. It crosses the two here. So two point something is a value of the circle. Is a two circle. This circle. R circle is a two circle. So it is approximately we got the 2.0 and theoretically we got the 2.088. Got it, my dear students. We got a VSW R voltage standing wave ratio. Voltage standing wave ratio. And also to find the reflection coefficient to find the reflection coefficient gamma is equal to its magnitude and angle theta r. So now what is a theta r we got uh, previously? That is a value of 1.0, 1.2 and 0.8. In the reflection coefficient, uh, the reflection coefficient magnitude is equal to the distance of OP and OQ ratio. What is the OQ ratio, OQ distance? Means after plotting the point P from origin to the P, extend this line up to the Q. Extend this line up to the Q value here. This is a Q. And now, by using the, the scale, you can find out the distance from origin to the point P and also the origin to the point Q and find the ratio between this, those two. We'll get the reflection coefficient magnitude value. Magnitude value. And then by using the protractor, you can find the angle of these two. Point to the origin to the point P and the point. Uh, Yes, value here. Find the angle here. Angle theta r we got as a theoretical lead is a 56 degrees. It is approximately how to get this angle is also the 50 degrees. Okay, my dear students. I think uh, the magnitude of a uh, reflection coefficient and angle r is a uh, 0.3 with an angle of 56 degrees and the theoretical value. That point 0.3 you'll get from this line, the distance from O to P and the distance from O to Q, the ratio, will get the point 0.3 approximately. Okay. So by using this mix chart, uh, we got a reflection coefficient, magnitude and angle and standing wave ratio also. That is a 2.0. And another one you have to find out that is a Z-in. Z-in is equal to input impedance. How we can find that input impedance? Uh, you can extend this line. I'm saying that is a zero O to the point P and O to the Q. Extend this line towards the backward and <clears throat> wherever it is a uh, crashes the S circuit. Once again, I'm saying my dear students, the, the zero to P the distance we are taking and O to P zero to the Q so that that line is extended backward to crash the line circle of a yes circuit wherever it is a process to find those values in terms of R and the bottom line we can say R minus J into X. Above the bottom line that is R plus J into X. That is we pointed that is a 1.2 R circle and the J into 0.8, the normalized impedance. Normalized impedance. And after the extended this line towards the backward and place a point that is a P dash. 
that p dash is r minus j into x r minus j into x because uh, the below the bottom line all the values uh, the imaginary values is a negative sign only got it my students you'll get that is a evidence also from the impedance we can find out the evidence and by using the evidence uh, we can find out the impedance the next one We understood how we get the value of yes from the circuit. Now, second one, next one, measurement of the reflection coefficient k. The angle of reflection coefficient k is obtained by extending a line from the center to the outer rim of the chart. Outer rim of the chart through the point. Uh, which indicates a normalized impedance the point at which the extended line cuts the outer rim gives directly the value of angle of reflection of the coefficient k in the commercial switch chart the k six scale is provided at the bottom of the chart then by selecting the point center on the scale draw an arc just intersecting the Sight line of the voltage reflection coefficient with radius is equal to the distance between the center of the chart and a point indicating the normalized impedance. Then the distance from the center to the point of intersection of the horizontal K cycle gives directly the magnitude of the K. We'll get the reflection coefficient and the magnitude. Okay, from the transmission line considered from the above example, draw a straight line starting from center and extending up to the outer rim through the point p this line intersects the outer rim at the point m m r is a q okay which indicates the angle of k as shown in the figure that at m the angle is a 55.5 similarly on the k scale at the bottom of the chart the arc drawn with the radius equal to the op intersects the horizontal line at the end and its magnitude is a 0.35 means the ratio between of a op the distance and the oq distance so 0.35 and angle is a 55.5 degrees okay my students then to find the input impedance we, we already find out that is a s is equal to lambda is equal to 90 meters V is V by F and S is equal to 30 meters, it is a 240 degrees. For the above transmission line example, the total length is given to 30 meters. Let us first calculate the in terms of the lambda because the lambda is a transmission line length. Lambda is equal to V by F or F is equal to V is equal to F lambda. This point 0.6 C by F and 0.6 into 3 into 10 to the power of 8. And F is given the 200 and the power of 6, 90 meters. S is equal to 30 meters length is given. So 30 meters, uh, 30 by the 90 into lambda. In terms of the lambda, you have to find out. So for the given S is equal to 30 meters, uh, you can convert it to the, in terms of the lambda, nothing but the degrees, 30 by 90 into lambda. Is lambda by 3, what is the lambda? Nothing but the 720 degrees. By 3 is a 240 degrees. So whatever the angle is there the 0 to p extend that is a 55.5 degrees towards the anti-clockwise direction up to the 240 degrees up to the 240 degrees now in the chart the line op is extend up to the outermost scale cuts at the point e says the distance corresponding the point e is a 0 0.7 0 0.173 lambda okay so you can use this all the values uh, whatever we got from the switch chart that e is a 0 0.7 1 point, point uh, 0.173 lambda then move from the point e and the distance is equal to the 0 0.33 lambda in clockwise direction to reach generator point f as shown in the figure there now total distance to be 
traveled the point 33 lambda from the point A, the extreme right point crossing the corresponding to the point 25 lambda is given as 0.25 lambda minus 0.173 lambda, that is a 0 0.077 lambda. Okay. And by using this value, is only we got the Z in is equal to 0 0.48 plus J into 0 0.35. And this multiply with the Z naught. Whatever the impedance we got from the chart, Smith chart, that is a 0 0.48 and J into 0 0.35. Okay. The point of intersection on the line from O to T and the constant S circle is represented by the point T which is the intersection at the R is a 0 0.48 circle and X is a 0 0.35 circle. And this Z in is multiplied with the Z naught to get the actual input impedance what we find in the theoretical value. That is Z in is equal to 15 to 0 0.48 plus J into 0 0.035 is 24 plus J into 1.75. It's approximately equal to the Z in the theoretical value. Okay, so to know of the point lambda out is uh, here up to that is it can extend the uh, 244 degrees uh, to get the point P dash or otherwise. Whatever the R circle and X circle is crosses here, that is nothing but the Z in. That Z in is multiplied with the Z naught to get the actual input impedance. Actual input impedance. Got it, my students. So by using, by giving the values, whatever you are getting the load impedance and the characteristic impedance of Z0 and Z R and the frequency is given. And also the velocity at the velocity V is equal to 0 0.6 C, find the Z in value. By using the switch chart, you can find the magnitude of the reflection coefficient and angle of the reflection coefficient magnitude of reflection coefficient is the distance between the take the distance of 0 to p and uh, 0 to q or 0 to m here the ratio of that 0 to p and the uh, o to m is a reflection coefficient magnitude and whatever the angle is here the angle is a theta r and with this radius you can draw a circle showing that is a yes is process here standing wave ratio, it is approximately 2.088. And then extend this value, this line up to the, crosses the S line, S circle, sorry, and name it as the P dash. And find the R circle and the S circle, X circle crosses from here. And whatever the impedance we got, R plus minus J, minus J into X, Multiply with uh, Z naught, we get uh, Z in value. Okay, why is this Smith chart? We have to find out the reflection coefficient for magnitude and the angle. And with the radius of O to P, we get the, the S value and extend it this line and find the impedance and multiply the 50, we get the input impedance. Got it, my students.